got is a shoe for Fort Worth. It's a Paris class turned in by Troy Ermintrout. And it's somewhat of a tribute to Jim Poor. This is a specimen that he had made at a clinic when he was on the team going for going over to Stonely. And it's got a whole lot going on. It's got old school fullerene on the medial side and it's got a bit of a bevel and just regular fullerene. The beveling is on the lateral side. It's got it's got beveled heels and then it's got a safe heel. It's a hammer drawn toe clip and you got to make pairs. So basically it's muscle memory class. You got to make a left and a right. So just going to basically focus on the the working up the edge so that we can get that one side fullered and you don't have to rasp that out of there but you can actually have it forged in there the center punch mark is a quarter inch off so we have a half inch more material on the lateral side than the medial side and you will you will forge the lateral side somewhat but you're still going to forge the medial and the medial is is tapered down in the heel so that you, you gain a lot of length right there. So it's a, a quarter inch to the medial side giving you a, a half inch more on the lateral. All right, we've got a bump. I'm just gonna get some material in there so that we can clip it. You always just wanna bump the toe. got a really tight toe bend. I'm going to pull, just pull down and that's going to tighten that up quite a bit. little bit more and do it the other side too mark my toenails and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna worry too much about this line this is just how far out I'm going to go, when I say that, I'm going to do a bunch of forging, so if this line doesn't line up how coarse, it doesn't matter, I'll just reestablish that when I fuller through the whole thing. Alright, I'm going to find where my fullering goes, and I'm picking that edge up. So right now, I'm just going to, I'm hitting with the edge of my hammer, and I'm really picking up that edge. I'm going to go right on through the end. Making my heel. Again, I'm going to start it here. Picking up that edge. Then I'm going to come right here. Pick that edge up all the way or down. You can see I've really got a lump right here. Right along in here. You can see I picked up that whole edge because the thicker I can make this, when the fuller drops, it's gonna go and dive. So I've really gotta make an attempt to lay this up and over. All right, I'm just really picking up the hammer. And now if anything, I don't want to lean the shoe like this. I want to lean the shoe into the face. Lean it into the face. And I'm really picking up with the edge of my hammer. Finishing off that heel. Now, so I don't get rid of my safe end, I'm going to make the rest of my heel with it leaning at an angle to come in and finish that heel off.
Now you can see I really have that tucked over there. So when you're looking, I'm not really going from this top edge, it won't be fine. I've got that much, I've got almost 3 16 of an inch coming in where my fuller in. So now if I dive my fuller in, that's where I'll get my coarseness from. All right, I'm gonna try and get pretty close to the side. I still have that big old lump there because that's gonna be the material that's trapped on the outside of the fullering, which So you can see now I'm gonna just drop it in there. So what I want to make sure is I had enough height to where I'm still higher on the outside edge. This outside edge had enough material built up into it to where now I have enough height in there. I don't want to flatten it. What I'm going to do the next seat is I'm going to come out, work my heel to where it looks nice. I'm going to make my branch bend and then I'll pick this edge up one last time. Making my heel. Now what I'll do is I'll make my quarter bend. And pick up on that edge the whole time. I'm picking it up. And go around the corner. Flatten it out. Pretty much the first time I've really given it a good flattening. And like I say, just picking up on that edge. You can see from that, that view right there, how much I'm in from the, the, the foot surface of the shoe. Then I'll come back in here and fuller it. stamp it the other side you can see how I got I, I got it up to a point I've got a ridge where my fuller in and my hem in just meet it's a little it's a little flattened here but I can still clean that up a bit so this side's the opposite I'm just gonna bevel pulling my hammer down this way opposite of safing I get it flat there and I pull it whole time I'm safety go around the outside of the heel and again I'm gonna lean it this one's easier because it's it goes with your ergonomically it's easier to make the outside heel because everything's leaning in the right direction
So on this one, you definitely want to flatter it, flatten it. I'm going to just come here and I'm leaning my hammer a little bit out so that I can accentuate that bevel a little bit. So you can see, I've got my bevel started. Being a pairs class, this is the hard side because I'm going across my body. I'm just, I gotta stand way over and I'm trying to get that bevel. The other side, for a right-handed person, is very easy. So on this shoe, obviously if you go where you think you should, you're going to come into the bevel. So you just want to go a tad bit coarser. So the fullerin's already blowing out this edge. So I've got that bevel gets accentuated, but it gets weak. So I just want to come in here and flatten that down really good on the inside edge. What I'll do is I'll come revisit my heel, make my heel better, and then make the quarter bend. Make that heel pretty nice and clean. And then come here and we'll make the quarter bend. I'm gonna get up on the horn, hold it straight on the horn, and just kinda really make my bevel nice. Go all the way around over the quarter. Cool. We're pretty well fullered close to his, so now all I gotta do is clip it, and then we'll shape the shoe around the clip. Flattening it out real good. So I got some material. Bring it up here. Got me a nice source hole.
And then what I'll do is I'll just flatten up behind here. Make that be nice and crisp. So then, on the toe, I'm gonna come, I'm gonna bevel this side right into the toe. And on the other side, I'm gonna safe right into the toe. And obviously it looks shorter on the medial side, but that's because I'm gonna clean it up one more time. All right, I'm not gonna hit the foot surface, I'm only hitting the ground surface, but I'm just missing the foot surface ever so slightly. What I'm doing is just blending that toe right in there. Just getting that blend all in there. Close it up, and then I'm gonna do the same. Just trying to get that more elongated. And now, what I've got, is I've really got this surface picked up. I'm gonna just come in here, overlapping blows, and just really flatten it nice. Just kind of, just pushing it over just a little bit. Getting it all coming to that peak. Finish up the other side and be done. Alright, going from the heel, just kind of cleaning up that edge all the way through the toe, right on through to my toe clip. Pretty much just the opposite of the safing. And you're bringing everything, comes out of either the bridge of the foot, the widest part of the foot, or the toe clip. So you're making all those pieces intersect with each other. it off right here get that nice crisp corner shoe in the medial side you got safing the fullering comes up into a tip 
you could you can file this back I have this ridge right here that I could file back and make a nice top line on it off of the hammer I've got it safed up and then we flip it over and we've got a bevel and it, the bevel climbs up and you establish your your weight bearing and so it, it's basically medial is saved lateral is beveled and you have basically the same foot perimeter fit with the toe clip the but the, the boxing goes into the clip the safing goes into the clip Probably the biggest mistake people make in making pairs class is they fall in love with one shoe or the other and you have to When you practice you have to work on your weak side There's always a weak side whether you're fuller in whether it, it left and right handedness is what usually Messes horses up it is the left side of a horse the right side of the horse So the person that can make mirror image shoes they don't have to be a, people get confused because Mirror image shoes sometimes don't follow the, the, the specimens exactly, but they have all the basic principles. And those are very, in a pairs class, that is very, very important is to focus on mirror images of each other, consistent, like if you have a pair of shoes, if they're a little bit woofier on the lateral side than the medial side, that things like that, they have to, they have to marry up. And those will what kick you up like if you're going the ones are going against all the ones that'll kick you past a lot of the other ones in the twos and the threes and the fours if someone makes the specimen and he's got a mirror to go with it well then obviously we've got our winner but the thing is 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 don't try to if you get lost on one shoe you're usually going to go backwards in the pile just because one shoe's coming good the other one's the ugly stepchild and it just doesn't work out good so have a good one. Thanks for watching.